In exercise number two, we want to take 3 pi over 4 radians and use that value, um, after drawing it out on this unit circle, to estimate the sine value of 3 pi over 4. Uh, there's really two, two approaches to this. I think probably the easiest way for you starting out is to take 3 pi over 4 and convert that into a degree measure and then go ahead and use your protractor. So let's go ahead and just convert that right away. So we've got 3 pi over 4. We can multiply that by 180 over pi for our conversion. We'll note that the pi's cancel out. And I can divide each of these um, by 4. Here's how I know 180 is divisible by 4. So to find out if something's divisible by 4, you take the last two digits and determine if that's divisible by 4. So 80 is divisible by 4, so 180 must be divisible by 4. So if I take 180 and we divide that out by 4, 4 is going to go into 18 4 times, so 16, 20, or 45. Okay. So this and this cancel out, and I get the 45 on top, and 3 times 45 is 135 degrees. So there was a degree symbol here. So I'm at 135 degrees. Another way of thinking about that is 1 pi over 4 is 45 degrees, and I've got 3 of them. Okay, so we're going to go 135 degrees. So let's find 135 degrees on our protractor here. So it looks like it's right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this angle down. And I'm going to draw this up as best as I possibly can. And now what I want to do is I want to find the height value because, again, we're looking at the sine function. So we want to find the height value of that green point right there, the intersection of my terminal side and the unit circle. So we'll count up. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Let's cut that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like I'm at about a height of seven. So we'll say that, now remember these are approximations, we'll say that the sine of three pi over four is approximately 0.7. That's our estimate. Now, if you do this a little bit more exact with a straight edge, you might come up with something that's a little bit more precise. Okay, and that's good. What we're going to do in the next section, after we get done um, doing all these estimates, is we'll go ahead and find an exact value for it. But right now, again, we're just trying to estimate it, and we're trying to just get an idea of what the sine function actually, um, actually tells us.